he sees Laura waiting for him. And that's where the episode ends. Right there. And I said to myself, how could you do this to me? How dare you do this to me? Don't end here. Keep going. Can we get episode four now? Welcome to Earth 2, where superheroes exist and TV talk is the norm. It's your boy, Mo Crosby. I'm back with another American Gods episode review and recap. So you know what? Sit back, relax, and as always, welcome to the planet. Episode 3 of American God is aired, and as always, I'm here to do the recap and review for you. This episode is titled, Head Full of Snow. What I've done when I talk about American Gods and I talk about every episode, especially episode 1, is I've raved about the visuals. I can't talk about these visuals enough. They're beautiful. They're, they're, they're the second best thing about the show. Reason I say second best thing is because we still have Ricky Whittle and Ian McShane as Mr. Wednesday and as Shadow Moon. Those two together, TV gold. The best two things on TV right now. So yes, the visuals from American Gods, uh, Ian McShane and Ricky Whittle. So let's get into the episode. Um, episode opens with something somewhere in America. Somewhere in America is is painted on a building and we get to see a woman who's visited by a man. Um, Mr. Jackiel, I believe his name is, and Mr. Jackiel tells the woman that she's dead and he must come with her. He reveals himself later on to be an uh, agent, a um, messenger of Anubis, or maybe Anubis himself, and he takes her to a desert. He pulls her heart out and weighs it on a scale with a feather to see if, you know, she's been good. After she's been deemed to be good, he lets her pass through the Duat. She passes through the Duat, episode moves on. Now we are back in Chicago where Shadow is in a dream state, as always, where he always is every episode. He's dreaming, and he's dreaming he's with one of the Zorai sisters. Zorai, you know what? I'm not even going to go for it because Shadow couldn't even do it, so I'm not even going to do it myself. Zoraya um, kisses and tells Shadow what you know her and the other sisters do and why they are relevant and needed. Um, so the younger, the last, Zoraya gives um, Shadow a coin. Shadow wakes up and he decides to go convince Chernobog to play again, you know, to play a game of checkers with him. That was a con man. So he convinces Chernobog that he's old and is weak and he's probably not going to be able to swing the hammer enough to kill him the first time. So he might have to take a second shot. And since they only bet for one shot, if he doesn't die, then all he gets is one. They go, they play Shadow wins. Although when Shadow wins, he doesn't realize that he's still playing with a god. And, the, you know, the guy says, I'm still going to get to kill you when we get to Wisconsin. So I'm going to go with Roton and you to Wisconsin. Yeah. We're back in New York where a businessman from, I believe, Oman, um, name is Salim, you know, is waiting for a uh, business meeting. Never gets to it, but he leaves. And so when he leaves the building, he gets in a taxi. And in the taxi, he's, he's met by a man or the taxi driver. At this point, the taxi driver... You know, he now, he, the taxi driver reveals himself to the man as a djinn, genie, ifrit, whichever way you want to call it, um, drops him off at his hotel, and when they get to the hotel, you know, through a series of com um, conversations, the taxi driver and Salim go upstairs, and they have sex. The sex scene in this, in this, in this episode, because we've gotten sex scenes in the show, you know, going on, but we got one in this episode. And the one we got in this episode was very brilliantly done. It was a gay sex scene. Nothing about it felt wrong. It was beautifully shot. And even when it leaped from reality to inhuman, it just looked even more beautiful when, you know, the, the gen delivered. It, it was it was very beautiful. And I, I thought this was one of the better scenes of, you know, of the show up to this point. We leave this scene. You know, the gen leaves. Salim in the hotel. Salim goes in the, you know, he now assumes the personality of the djinn, goes and, you know, becomes a cab driver, or so we thought. Maybe we'll see him later on. But for now, that's where his story ends. We're back now in um, Chicago where Mr. Wednesday tells Shadow they're going to go rob a bank. This is after Shadow has just found out that he's still going to get his head smashed in. So they go, um, they go to this bank, they grab some deposit slopes. Mr. Wednesday tells Shadow, you know, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to take care of this. Just get me that phone number off the booth. Um, let's go make some business cards. And all you have to do, Shadow, is think of snow. That's all you have to do. From now to the, till I tell you to stop, all you're doing is thinking of snow. 
Shadow begins to think of snow, and we get these beautiful visuals again. This episode is chock full of a lot of visuals, a lot of visually beautiful scenes in this episode. And not just that, the um, interaction between Wednesday and Shadow in this moment, when they're, when, you know, Shadow's like, I'm not trying to do this. No, you are going to do this. You need to do this. You need to believe in me. Have faith. That interaction is very beautiful because when we get to still see Shadow who, all of this is happening to him and he's still not believing. What is it going to take for Shadow to believe or at least have a little faith? We don't, you know, so is this where Shadow is going to start believing in things other than himself or what he can't see? Because Shadow again breaks down to Mr. Wednesday in this episode. Look, everything, things have, you know, broken down into two, reality and fantasy. If you can't see it, if you can't feel it, then it's fantasy. That is the way I live my life. And they have a conversation later on, you know, when the bank deed is done because they successfully robbed the bank. It's just two con men and they pull off the best heist I've ever seen and they rob this bank and it's beautifully done and it's and, and, and actually Shadow thinks it's snow all day till it starts snowing. It's like a, a lot of snow and Shadow now starts to think, did I cause it to snow? Did I do this? And he, while he's thinking about all this, he's he's still like, you know, he's still not believing whatever's going on. So at the end of the day, he, he, he thinks he may have caused it to snow. He's not really sure. And then Mr. Wednesday and Shadow have this conversation where Shadow says, where Wednesday says to Shadow, do you ever, did you believe in love before you, before you, do you believe in love? Shadow goes, yes. Did you believe in love before you fell in love? Shadow goes, no. And Mr. Wednesday delivers, no, Ian Machine delivers the most solid line I've heard all season long. Well, it's only three episodes, so all three episodes. He says to Shadow, you didn't believe until you did. And when you did, you finally had something to believe in. Now that is what I'm trying to get you to understand. All in, all this is happening. Matt Sweeney wakes up in the bathroom of the bar where he and Shadow, you know, came to fists, came to blows. And for Leprechaun, he believes in luck and he can't find his lucky coin until he realizes that that was the coin he gave to Shadow in episode one. So I do all that to bring you back to this. Zariah, the younger Zariah who gave Shadow a coin said to him, you had the sun. Now I'll give you the moon. And then it clicked. The sun was the golden coin the leprechaun gave him in episode one, Matsune. The moon is the silver coin she gave him in this episode. They both have different types of luck. Depends on which way you want to look at it, but you have to protect your luck. Matsune didn't. He's, in, he's, he's within a series of bad luck. Shadow tells him where to go get the coin. Matsune goes to get it, opens the grave. There's nobody in it. Shadow gets back to his motel, opens his door. He sees Laura waiting for him. And that's where the episode ends. Right there. And I said to myself, how could you do this to me? How dare you do this to me? Don't end here. Keep going. Can we get episode four now? No, 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 no. They don't give us episode four right after. We have to wait a whole nother week. Look, I'll tell you this. Everything in this episode was done brilliantly. Ian McShane and Shadow shined. Um, the the Jin and Celine scene was fantastic. There was so much to pick from from this episode that I, I, I can't really... I don't want to delve into it. I want you guys to go watch it so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. This episode was the most brilliant one yet. And for you to think this is a TV show where, you know, usually you get episode one which is the highest one, and then you get episode two a little dip, and episode three hits his dip. This show hasn't hit his dip. To me, it feels like it's just picking a stride. It's higher than episode two for me, so I'm gonna give it, go back to give it a nine. I loved it, two thumbs up. Go watch it. I'll, talk, I'll try to talk about it more on the podcast. Here you have it. That's been my review and recap for episode three of American Gods, Head Full of Snow. As always, it was a beautifully shot show. It was beautiful visual with beautiful visuals, with beautiful acting Ian and the crew did their thing i love it down in the comment section let me know if you love if you love it too let me know if you will be watching the rest of it let me know if you're gonna binge it when it's over it's only at eight episodes for season one. Oh, by the way shout out to the showrunners for getting picked up for season two that's always a great thing you know when your favorite show get when one of your new favorite shows get picked up for a new season so shout out to you guys um as always you can find earth 2 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or to Comicast. 
uh like share subscribe as always um myself and Vito will be back tomorrow to do our favorite day of the week you know what it is new comic book day watch out for that um i'm your boy mo crosby go watch the show peace